Good morning, church, on this feast of the Pent of Pentecost. At the first Pentecost, soon after the death and resurrection of Jesus, the Jesus community had an inspiring vision. It saw itself as a community called to embrace everyone as a brother and sister, Jew and Gentile alike, slave and free. Let me read to you the version given to us by Luke, the evangelist, who narrates the first Pentecost in his Acts of the Apostles, chapter 2, verses 1 through 11. When the time for Pentecost had, was fulfilled, they were all in one place together. And suddenly there came from the sky a noise like a strong driving wind, and it filled the entire house in which they were. Then there appeared to them as tongues of fire, which parted and came to rest on each one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in different tongues as the Spirit enabled them to proclaim. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven staying in Jerusalem. At this sound they gathered in a large crowd, but they were confused because each one of them heard them speaking in his own language. They were astounded, and in amazement they asked, Are not all these people who are speaking Galileans? Then how does each of us hear them in his native language? We are Parthians and Medes and Elamites, inhabitants of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt, and the districts of Libya near Cyrene, as well as travellers from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs. Yet we hear them speaking in our own tongues of the mighty acts of God. In the past few weeks, we have witnessed the bombings in Israel and Gaza as Jewish leadership and Palestinian leadership battle each other over land that was a common household 2,000 years ago. We are aware that Gaza today has a mixture of Muslim and Christian and Arab and even Jewish communities, while Israel has a mixture of Jewish and Christian and Arab communities, all living in an uneasy truth, truce. Thankfully, there's now a ceasefire, but we cannot be sure that the ceasefire will last. So we pray for God's help and God's guidance. And we ask ourselves, what is the message of Pentecost for Arab and Israeli? And more precisely, what is the message of Pentecost that God's Spirit wishes to give to all his children in his world? I would like to relate to you a personal experience that I believe speaks to the attitude that God's Spirit wishes to convey to his world today. I revisited a church where I had once been a pastor. I entered the church during the community Sunday worship and I knelt in the last pew 
and observed the community in front of me. As I watched them, lots of negative feelings surfaced in me towards certain members and certain groups in the community. These had not been receptive to me as a pastor, and it made my life difficult. But as I knelt there and nursed these negative feelings, God granted me a vision. Suddenly, I saw the face of God. He was hovering over the altar, and he was smiling and extending his arms out to embrace the whole community. I was stunned and shocked. My knees buckled, and I became weak with fright. I realized at that moment that the way God saw his community was not the way that I did. I was humbled and embarrassed, and I knew that I had to change. Many years later, I was given the opportunity to return as pastor to that same community. This time I came back with a different attitude than I had before that vision experience. I determined to embrace everyone in the same manner that I had observed God embracing them. My second time to pastor that community was a wonderful experience. And when my term as pastor came to an end, I left the community with tears and sadness. I was leaving friends whom I had come to love and would come to love me. So what is the nature of these sevenfold gifts that the Spirit gives at Pentecost? What is the nature of a gift from God? If a friend were to give me a gift of a new coat, I would choose a coat that looked well on me. I would pick the right material and color, <coughs> excuse me, the right size and shape. And if it were not a perfect fit, I would have it altered to fit me perfectly. That's what I would do if I were offered the gift of a new coat. But the seven gifts that the Holy Spirit offers me are not like the gift of a personal coat. Here the coat that is offered is God's coat. And I'm asked to change myself to fit the coat not change the coat to fit me. The gift of wisdom that the Holy Spirit offers me is not something that I can take and fit and mold to my personality. It is God's wisdom that I am asked to embrace and I am called upon to change everything in my personality that obstructs the wisdom of God from shining through me. In the Our Father prayer that Jesus taught to his disciples, he begins from God's perspective, not ours, when he proclaims, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. 
Then he asks God to give us the bread, the Eucharistic bread of Christian fellowship, so that we can forgive those who offend us, as God has forgiven us. The gifts of the Holy Spirit are opportunities to us so that we can view the world from God's perspective. When the Spirit descended on the first church of Pentecost, it transformed them into a community who called God their Father and who embraced everyone as brother or sister, Jew and Gentile, slave and free. All were united in the bond of Christian fellowship. The same Holy Spirit that descended on the first church of Pentecost is present in St. Paul Church today and is offered to your heart and to mine. The question is, can we allow the Spirit to transform us as he did that early Christian community. God bless you.